All right. Have a good show, Mom. Thank you, Marquise. Good evening, everyone. Good and evening. welcome to Reset with Rev Sherry on TCP Network. Our topic today is on singleness. What does God say about singleness? The Bible addresses singleness in some scriptures, and I underscore some scriptures, as never married or the virgin, divorce, the widow, but stresses all of it is a gift from God. Today, yeah. present day, in our moral system, our worldly system, our singleness may look different than it did in biblical times. So we're going to talk about that. Singleness today may be a choice or it may not. Nevertheless, we are here to uplift the body of Christ and celebrate singleness. Highly favored and chosen by God for such a time as this. I like the way that our church, their single ministry has, how they put it. Single, saved, and soaring. I love that. Single, saved, and soaring. Amen? Amen. Yes. So, my <laughs> pastor quoted, we have single ministries because singles must fully be incorporated into the body of Christ just as married couples. The vision is to deliberately target ministry to singles, that may strengthen, you hear that, strengthen and build up singles in their daily walk with Christ. That was Pastor Clement M. Lupton, the third from the senior pastor at Beloved, uh, Beloved Evangelistic Church in Philadelphia. So we have today Hope Sawyer, and you may remember Hope Sawyer from a previous show that we had, amen? Shirley Nash. We have Dwight, Martin, Martin Powell, and Vanessa Smith. Each of them will share with us their singleness, the challenges, their hopes, their future, and their heart desires. First, I want to thank our sponsors who support Reset on TCP Network. Our sponsors are Legal Shield with Kimberly Robinson, WLAB, Internet Radio 107.3, founder and CEO, Pastor Louis A. Butcher Jr., Erica Dennison, Paparazzi Jewelry, Elizabeth Guthridge, EAG Credit Solutions, LLC, helping build their legacy. Please support our sponsors and remember to mention that we sent you our sponsors will be highlighted at the end of the show. So before we move into our show with our phenomenal guest, <laughs> okay, share on Facebook with family and friends and uh, a watch party, okay? So reset is to change, it is to adjust, it is to shift, it is to transition, it is to transform, it is to correct. We are unapologetic, we are Christ-centered. We are here to inspire, we are here to encourage, and we are here to empower. And as you know, if you follow us on Facebook, we always have a scripture. Today our scripture can be found at 1 uh, Corinthians 7, Mm -hmm. through nine. So what is happening here is that Paul is responding to the Corinthians in written questions in his letter. See, they had a lot of questions like we have today. He gives practical advantages of, of celibacy while insisting it is not only the one opinion. Options of singleness are or marriage. However, he says the celibate life has concrete practical advantages, meaning the single life has concrete practical advantages. The scripture reads, now to the unmarried and the widow. It's interesting because they combine the unmarried and the widows. Paul says, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. 
But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. And that came from the NIV. I like the way that the message says it. It says, sometimes I wish everyone were single like me. A simpler life in many ways. But celibacy is not for everyone any more than marriage is. God gives the gift of single life to some. The gift of married life to others. In verse 34, Paul talks about the virgin as a separate group. The unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. So the gift of singleness, verse 40, says, but in my judgment, she is more blessed if she remains as she is. And I think that I too have the spirit of God. To the contemporary us, single, celibate, abstinent, may be a foreign word to a lot of people. The gift of singleness, and I want to underscore that the gift of singleness, the vision of the single, saved, and soaring ministry established at um, beloved St. John Evangelistic Church. We have uh, two members that are um, directing that ministry for Christian adults. We also have other uh, singles on our panel. So yeah, we're still here. Learn okay, come over there, Mom. Of, of God's Mom. will for the single person and, and find wholeness and fulfillment in Christ. Okay? So, Father, I pray that you will guide this show, God, and that you will teach us and give us wisdom and that all of the singles that are listening will be empowered and understand that this is, for such a time as this, a gift from God. So, again, our, our uh, guest, Hope Sawyer, she attends Goodman Mercy University. Gwynedd Mercy University, where she is a senior and will be earning her bachelor's degree in early childhood education. <laughs> and as you see, there are different ages of single. Hope is a firm believer, has a strong passion and love for the Lord, for people and for children, both young and old. She is a member of beloved St. John Evangelistic Church of Philadelphia. Shirley ja um, Dash, Shirley is family oriented, God fearing woman who enjoys life and loves to pay it forward. And we'll ask her more about that. What does she mean by pay it forward? Amen. Shirley is known for many things such as her kindness and how she loves to help others, always encouraging. And you can count on her to stand in a gap when she is in need to fulfill. Shirley has a wonderful career as an IT professional, women in technology, in the healthcare industry. She is one of the Philadelphia Eagles super fans, as well as an all around Philadelphia sports fan. I need to learn from you because I know nothing about sports. Even though, yeah. Shirley is also a faithful and dedicated member of 24 years at beloved St. John Evangelistic Church, where she is part of the music ministry. You can see her on Sundays just moving around and the director of Single Save and Soaring Ministry. I just love that. Single Save and Soaring Ministry. Yes. We have Dwight Martin right there, our brother. Single of three, father of three, pop up to one, Nathan, still learning, just like the rest of us, to put God first in everything. Dwight is a member of beloved St. John Evangelistic Church, where he serves as the awesome man of God, Pastor Clement Lupton III and First Lady Reverend Brenda Lupton. He serves on several ministries, including the Assistant Director of Beloved uh, Singles Ministry. White is currently employed with a COVID prevention program. Good for you. For mm -hmm. homeless seniors, mental and drug dependent homeless families. He is employed by one of Philadelphia's sports teams, part-time student, but still finds time for family, friends, and fun. 
We have Margaret Powell, I believe, on there. We can't see her right now. Um, she is a single mother of three adult children. She's a grandmother of eight, one great grand. She is co-founder of Sister Love Christian Ministries Incorporated. Her favorite scripture, and we're going to ask her more about that later, is thir uh, Psalm 37. She attends Greater Emmanuel Church in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. And we have Vanessa Smith, born in Alabama and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. She has four brothers and one sister. She lived in Lancaster for the last uh, 13 years. She worked in retail before going to school for court reporting. She graduated with an associate degree, received awards, perfect attendance, and dean's list. I know that when I was working and I walked into the courtroom and I saw this sister up there, <laughs> my works at Lancaster County Courthouse. She is a notary and a member of the Pennsylvania Court Reporters Association. She is proudest that she can type 225 words a minute and her goal is to achieve her certification in her field. All right, so thank you for all my guests. We're just going to um, just start right at it on singleness. There is a lot to talk about. I'm gonna start with uh, Hope first. Hope, not that you're the youngest, but I'm gonna talk <laughs> first. So what do you do to remain a safe single? And the rest of you get ready to answer some of these questions also. What do you do, Hope? There you go, Margaret, yay. What do you do, Hope, to remain a, a, um, a saved single? And once you tell me what you do, what is a saved single for anyone out there that may not know? So I'll start off with the saved single part. A saved single is, for me, is someone who is grounded into the word of God and looks to the word of God to help you um, in your singleness. So when you feel that you're lonely, when you feel that depression is going to start kicking in because you want to be with someone or you want to be married one day, but you haven't found the right person, the word of God will always direct you and show you um, who the person is um is in your life um that god will send to you um for me for me to in order for me to stay grounded into the word of god um that just entails with me going to church serving in different ministries serving in different ministries can distract you from the flesh the fleshly things that are in the world that can get you off of your square so i free worship in church I attend church every Sunday. I go to both services and that really helps me to take my focus off of being lonely or feeling that, you know, I'm coming to church by myself and not having anyone with me or not um, being in the habit of dating anyone at the moment. But I come to the realization that God has a plan set for me and God has a plan set for you. And so even at your age now, you know, you don't have to be desperate. You don't have to look. You don't have to search for a man. You just wait for God to provide that man in your life because he will show you who is the right one for you. And he will show you, uh-uh, that ain't the one for you. You need to find someone who is um, equally yoked, just as you are. And when I say equally yoked, equally yoked is very important because if that male is not one, does if that male does not have the same mindset that you have, then it can't work because you want to make sure that you know you both are on the same page. You both have a relationship with Christ. And for me, my relationship with Christ is my number one priority. Um, I will not be, I would not be the woman that I am today if it was not for Christ. And so, if I take Christ out of the center of a relationship, out of you know, when I get married thing and I'm doing it for the wrong purpose. But when you keep God in the center, then he will show you. He will show you the signs. He will direct you to the positivity and not the negativity when that entails. So, yes, definitely being very involved in church and having people that um, 
or I can hold accountable um, so that they can tell me when, you know, this person, they can see this person is not good for you, that person isn't good for you, and they can kind of lead me and direct me in the way that I should go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That 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 is a lot, but all of that was really good, equally yoked and and um feeling lonely, especially at your age, you know, because there's um so many other distractions out there um to get involved in, not as much because of COVID, but it is on social media. But tell me, um, Shirley, what was the vision? I mean, there was like a, a vacuum, an emptiness. Um, and you would hear what the marriage ministry is doing. And, you know, they were getting ready to take a cruise. And, you know, they get together, ugly sweater contests and everything. You see what the deacons are doing, the deaconess. Where was the vision? Where did that vision come from? Well, I was charged in 2005, uh, just sitting, sitting in the church when I'm not doing, when I wasn't doing ministry for a singing and I'm sitting in the back, I try to sit in different places um, when I'm at the church so you can fellowship with different people that you don't know and, or pray with different people that you don't know. So I will hear when the announcements will go up, I will hear, you know, you know, different ministries are having different things going on from the youth ministry, from the senior saints, from the married from the transportation, security, you name it, ushers, everybody was doing something. And I kept hearing people say, well, what about the singles? Why are the singles not having nothing? And I would hear this time after time, year after year. Now time went past and I'm like, oh my goodness. It, it really wasn't bothering me because of the life that I live for the Lord and how much I enjoy life. However, I was hearing the cries of the other folks. And I said, you know what? It's not about me. It's not about me. So I kept putting it off. And the Lord was like, mm -mm, I'm tagging you. And years went past. So that was 2005 when the Lord tagged on me, spoke to me in 2019. <laughs> so I was disobedient for all those years. Forgive me again, Lord. I was disobedient for all those years. And I really didn't. I went to pastor and we talked and I was really looking for, I was looking, really looking to like overshadow, over, be an overseer of the um, newly re, renewed um, singles ministry and um, with nobody stand up or step up or raise their hand <laughs> when we was in a meeting with pastor um, in April 2019. So he was like, surely won't you try it on a uh, temporary basis and, you know, someone step up then, you know, but you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when the shepherd of the house asks you to do something, you know, um, so that turned into one thing. And then I asked God, you know what, I can't do this alone. So I, I prayed for leadership, leaders to be on the team. And I prayed for diversity, you know, not just you know, far as age and men, women, I just wanted a, a roundabout core team that can support and represent the whole body of Christ that's single yes. or unmarried. So mm -hmm. um, we can talk about that a little bit later, but mm -hmm. yeah, so here we are today, okay. 2021, and um, yeah, excited about the ministry. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to Margaret. Um, Margaret, is there a difference in being single uh, as a senior and single as a young adult? Yes, it is, Sherry. The difference is that we're dealing with generations, okay? We have the baby boomers, which is the single uh, senior, or Indians who are, you know, the uh, young adult. And uh, with um, with uh, the senior, uh, we are we're set in our ways, and 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 the um, the young adult they help us to you know to uh, to do things different, and because of them, they had uh, I can really speak on my niece. She had helped me to get on Facebook and mm -hmm. to uh, FaceTime so I could be able to see my grandkids. And, you know, and just have a good time with them. So that's, you know, as for generations, that's what that is. And 
as a single person, you know, older person, uh, sure, I go through some things, but you know what? God is so good. He just takes care of me as, you know, I live alone and he's here by my side. And, you know, there are some things that, you know, I go through, but God, he works it out. And one thing about him, he is so good and he takes care of me. And another thing with the young people that came to my mind that they go through a whole lot. And, and um, you know, uh, I would like to say to them that God is able to keep them and, and, and continue to uh, bless them. And um, as both, uh, both generations merge, you know, we can help each other. And so I'm, um, you know, praying for that. Mm -hmm. So tell me, Dwight, how is um, your singleness a gift from God? How is, um, yeah, your singleness from God? I mean, you're a man, okay? So I'm just going to put it out there like we don't already know. But <laughs> <laughs> how is your singleness a gift from God? God, with all the distractions and everything that exists in our world, even you have to be careful of uh, a friend told me, she said, I told my friends not to talk to me about sex because I'm single and I don't want to have any triggers. Um, and yeah, I went out and I was, you know, like interviewing other uh, single people, how do you handle your singleness that is a gift from God? So how do you handle your singleness, Dwight? You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, thank you again for having me. Um, You're welcome. First of all, it was prayer. It was definitely prayer. Um, God has truly kept me um, through this walk. Um, from becoming a single parent. Um, I didn't realize that as a single parent, when I decided to not date as I was raising my young boys, because there were certain things I did not want them to uh, have to deal with. I mean, um, I did try to date early and there was actual, actual times when uh, some females did not want me to keep my children. So that mm -hmm. was not going to happen. So I realize now that that was the gift. God was telling me then, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me then, your children need to be first. Mm. And then later on, I even learned that I had to say to my children that I, I realize now that God should be first in my life. You can't be. And that was something else that I wanted to uh, instill into my children's lives. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a ride. It's been a walk. But I thank mm -hmm. God, you know, under the leadership of the pastor and first lady that I'm with now, um, the classes that I've taken over time, I've learned that it's truly a gift. Everything that God gives you is a gift because at one time I did not know that, including singleness. Um, you think that because you're single, uh, you know, you're not part of something, but you are. You are part of something. You are part of, you know, God's family. You are heir to God's throne. Um, you know, I had to learn that. So, um, I, you know, dating and not dating, I've learned that it's still a gift. Singleness is truly a gift. Mm -hmm. Vanessa, how is your singleness a gift? Well, thank you, Sherry, for having me. Uh, You're welcome. First, first of all, it gives you time to work on yourself. You know, okay. I mean, we have these jobs, we, we have everything else, children in our lives, and it gives you time to work on yourself, you know, date yourself, get to know yourself, mm -hmm. and um, work on yourself. That way, you can be a better person for when you, when God does give you that opportunity, bring someone in your life, then you're prepared, you're better prepared for that person, you know. So how do you, how do each of you date yourself, this self-care? How do you date yourself? How do you treat yourself? How do you not get all wrapped up into the world about what it would, um, it says maybe about being um, single, especially um, we're, uh, a couple of weeks ago was Valentine, Valentine's Day. How do you all celebrate yourself during these times when every commercial is on couples. I'm gonna start with Shirley. Mute, you're on mute, Cheryl. 
You're on mute. Well, for me, I just happen to love um, romantic movies. So as a young lady, young girl growing up, that part of um, the holiday never really affected me. So I would watch Hallmark all year long. It would never affect okay. me. So, okay. yeah, so it's, so I like stuff like that, but, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, um, I think about others, like my family members, like my elderly aunt, my aunt Merle, like I think, you know, and my, um, elderly cousins, um, Pauline and Mickey, I think about those family members like that. How can I be a, a, a gift to them on those type of days? So it's, it's really not really about me, you know, because I'm going to tell you, sister Sherry, this is a choice for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I had to learn that time over over the years, you know, after finishing school and all that stuff, that it's a choice for me, for me to be single. And mm-hmm. I enjoy it. You enjoy it. <laughs> okay. okay. Anybody else? Is, is singleness a choice for you? I have um, to agree with uh, Ms. Shirley. Singleness is a choice for me. Um, there's beauty within your singleness. There's so much that you can do with yourself before putting yourself out there and trying to explore um, who is out there. Um, I know for me, when it comes around Valentine's Day and things like that, I don't just sit and get depressed and get upset like, oh my gosh, I wish I had, um, you know, somebody to cuddle up with. I wish I could watch a love movie with somebody, but I always go the extra mile of what can I do to show love to somebody else. So for me, I already know that the greatest love of all is Jesus Christ. And there's no other better love that I could ever receive. Um, And so, you know, with being and with Valentine's Day being on a Sunday this year, it was actually perfect because I'm like, well, I get to spend it in church. church. I'm going to both services. Right. You know, they're singing about love. You know, Jesus went that comedy the same branch like you and me. Amen. That's love. And then, you know, just thinking of different songs like that. And I never get, I never get in the mindset of, you know, wanting to play love um, music all day long or wanted to watch um different movies or different shows that have those type of scenes in it where it's like okay i wish i was in this position but no if you really truly think about it because there's beauty within your singleness there there's love within your family there's love within your friends there's love within Jesus Christ himself and so that's where you can find love if you ever find yourself getting in that position of, I really wish that I had this or I had like that. Mm -hmm. So you find beauty in your singleness. Who else wants to talk about that? Where is the beauty in your singleness? And if you're at that point, how did you get there? Not everybody finds beauty in their singleness. I mean, the world pushes you in a certain way. The world tells you that you know, as far as women, your womb, well, you're getting older. You may hear from different people, particular, uh, more particular is your, is your family. Where, where do you find that? Because that is, that is a place of peace, your beauty in your singleness. How did you get to there, um, Vanessa? Beauty in your singleness. Well, first of all, Sherry, you have to be comfortable with yourself, with your own company. Mm -hmm. And if you're not comfortable with yourself and your own company, you can't be, you know, can't be comfortable with someone else. So I enjoy my own company. It's not like I don't want to have someone in my life, but I I just do other things, you know, pray, I go to church, sing in a choir, you know, but now we're out. So, you know, we have to do everything online, but I just keep myself busy. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I don't think of it as being something uh, negative. You know, mm-hmm. there is a lot of beauty in being by yourself. Then you can hear what God is trying to tell you. You know, you have mm-hmm. to be still. You have to be still, mm-hmm. and you have to listen. And there's a time and a season for everything. You know, mm-hmm. and Amen. I think right now, Amen. Amen. the time for me is just to be still and to. I'm in a waiting period. You know, I'm waiting for God. Mm-hmm. so there's a you know there's a time for everything so right mm-hmm. now this thing is just not my time and when it is I'll be ready to welcome you know whoever it is I'll be happy you know yeah 
Um, Margaret, beauty in your singleness. You raised your kids um, as a single parent. You have eight grandchildren. Beauty in your singleness. How did you get to this uh, point in your life, Margaret? Through prayer. Yeah, I'm... We're having, some, uh, we're having technical difficulty with um, with Margaret's um, with uh, her computer. So no. Um, anyone want to else want to take that a beauty in your singleness? I I know I've been on there for a while, but let's be honest. The world um, does not raise us to get to a point of beauty in our singleness. I believe I'm the only widow on um, in this panel in uh, beauty in your singleness. When I, when I heard that, or when I heard all the celebration, or when I heard um, that singleness is a, is a gift of God, honestly, this is my first time hearing that. And, um, that really was soothing to my heart because I'm still accepting singleness. Um, so yeah, I mean, because the world does not um, embrace that. And so all of you are talking um, a different language, a, a different beat, a different mindset. You're saying different things to yourself. And so really, how to share that with our, our listeners. Um, beauty within your singleness. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I want to just say that, you know, like it's a process. And how did I get here? You know, you know really, I'm just share, it's about being busy and not being busy on purpose, but you find mm -hmm. joy in things that God bless you with within the world, like take education. Um, I pursued my education, you know, at a younger age when I was in my twenties, you know, I went for different degrees and um, um, I dated here and there, but it, while you're in school, you really don't have time to really have a relationship unless you're married, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or unless that person you're mm -hmm. with, you know, they understand that maybe a day or two, you're not gonna be able to talk to them or you, mm -hmm. they're not gonna hear from you because you have to study. And so a lot of people that know me, family and friends know me, they, they know that from one school, I took maybe a half a year off and then I went right back for my bachelor's. And then, you know, then mm -hmm. by me being into sports, you know, I'm fanatic, uh, a big fanatic sports fan. So time within that, I found things, or let me just go back and say, God has blessed me with so many different opportunities that I was able to take advantage of not only being a level of education, not only loving different types of sporting events, going to events, watching events, having events with my family and friends. And once again, that takes time away also from you sitting around thinking about you're by yourself. No, God will put people in your life. He will put things in your path to say, this is beautiful. Have you looked into this? Have you looked into mm -hmm. that? So Sometimes you don't have time to sit back and think about you by yourself because mm -hmm. the Lord said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. So Amen. I, 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 I try mm -hmm. my best not to use that word, you know, I'm lonely. You know what I mean? You may be alone, but you're never lonely, lonely. because the Holy Ghost is with you. And he said it in his word. He will never leave you nor forsake Amen. you. So Amen. even with that being said, God is so good to us by giving us other gifts that he has blessed with with us mm. on this earth and not taking none of it for granted. We was able to go to out into different events, but now we doing Zoom, we doing, you know, technology. And like Ms. Margaret said, she now has to learn technology and is bringing the gaps of generations together of mm -hmm. one another. So mm -hmm. even with us, within our singleness, we're seeing how we are coming together with the different generations. And I want to thank your niece, Ms. Margaret, because I love when I hear any young adult or young folk helping out our, um, our elderly, our older folks, because I'm, I'm big on it. I am big on helping out our older folks and because the wisdom come from you all. So mm -hmm. I just thank God for, for you all. So it's just little things like that, Sherry. Mm -hmm. just, I can go on and on, but I'm gonna stop right there. 
Well, mm -hmm. Margaret, you want to uh, comment how you want to comment, Margaret? Yes. Go ahead, please. About the uh, beauty within your singleness. You know, even with me getting old, um, um, it's, 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 it's still, it's a joy. It's a joy in getting old and um, the way, you know, cause I, I draw closer to God, I'm in his presence mm -hmm. and I'm not worried about, you know, being lonely as much, you know, because God is with me. And um, I, just, I just love God, how he just keeps me and he keeps my mind. He keeps me um, going on. I'm able to, I'm still mobile. I still can go out, enjoy myself. And um, he's he's just awesome. He's he's good. And Margaret, you you in your singleness, you co-founded a ministry called Sister Love Ministry uh, with your sister. You want to um, tell us about that? Those are some of the things that you're doing. Yeah, we go to uh, different uh, places like uh, Mom's House, and we talk to the uh, uh, the women there at the Mom's House, and we uh, teach you know uh, different trainings and, and workshops, and we uh, spoke on stress, and that was really good, and and self esteem, and they really enjoy themselves, and and uh, I really enjoy it. And, and then we go to the nursing home and we visit people there and uh, we show love and we bring, you know, flowers and, you know, and the homeless, we, we're, we're, we're forever, you know, for the homeless, especially in the summertime that we're able to give bottles of water, even give, you know, clothes out to the homeless and we're able to speak into their hearts and, and tell them that God yet loves you, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't look at them uh, you know, down, but we look at them to lift them up. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're really, you know, it's a blessing. We do. So what I, what I hear you saying, and Dwight, I'm going to ask you a question, but what I hear you saying is that all of you have found community within um, the things that you love. You established a uh, co-partnered with your sister to establish a ministry to go out and help um, the, the least fortunate among us, um, showing the light of God, uh, showing the light of Jesus, who Jesus is, helping um, God's people. Um, I, I, with the rest of you, you uh, get involved with church or you're involved in some sport activity um, you have family, for instance, you, Vanessa, you want to talk about, um, and then Dwight, I'll go, I promise to go over to you. Um, you are not a, a, you've never mothered, um, birth children, but tell me what you have done within your family, because many of us in the African American community also do this, but what do you, what have you done for, uh, your your family uh well when i was um maybe about 27 or so and i don't want to go back too far i'll be dating myself but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh we got custody of uh, my sister's kids there are three of them and i was just starting school for court reporting i think i was six months in and i was like oh my god how am i gonna do this but i thought about it i was like I'm like, Ma, how am I going to do this? I don't have any kids. She said, Vanessa, I've raised my kids already. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do? So I said, well, do you want me to help you? She said, yeah. So me and my mom and, and my dad, we took on the responsibility. And, you know, it's just an experience, you know. She got them off to school in the morning. I took care of them at night, you know, did all their activities and everything. And, I mean, when you think about it, I didn't know at the time when I'm, you know, it was in God's plan. It was mm -hmm. in his plan all along because mm -hmm. I moved home, I think, uh, right. maybe a few months prior to us getting the kids. And I'm like, well, you know, who would have thought? But, you know, they're, they're a blessing to see them um, 
to see them grow. And now I have my great nephew here. Oh boy, I just said another. I'm giving giving out too much information here. <laughs> my great nephew. So yeah, and uh, you know, trying to help him out with his online schooling and everything. You know, which is you know, kids are really suffering with that. But you know, I'm very I'm a very determined individual. So we're gonna get this done. Okay. We're gonna get this done, and he's gonna you know grow up to be a wonderful young man. You know. He loves football, you know, yeah. very smart, you know, so headstrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, but it's funny, he's a lot like I was at his age. <laughs> oh, so, wow. So yeah. even in our beauty of our singleness, we continue to move on. We have Dwight. He had, as he said, um, a father of three, pop pop to one, um, and um, working and when we were in church, I would see you everywhere. You drive the van also, um, and you're um, in a lot of different ministries. How do you do all this and still enjoy your life, Dwight, your, your happiness, your singleness? Where does all that come from? Well, you know, Reverend Sherry, it, it, it took for one lonely Christmas um, with my kids eventually going to visit their mother and I was home alone. I, I mean, I was miserable. Um, I wasn't attending church. Um, and, and it took for that gift from God, the Holy Spirit to say, you know, get up and, you know, you know, listen to me, just get up and learn to listen to me. And I got up and I ended up going to church that Sunday. And from that point on, he put something in my spirit that you never are alone. You know, um, it's not about your children. It's not about uh, your family. It's about me. And, I, and it's about learning to love yourself. And from mm -hmm. that holiday, I said, I will never feel alone again. I will never feel lonely. And, and the, the um, actual ministries that I'm part of, um, they're a blessing. They are truly a gift. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, riding with the seniors um, on security. Um, it, it's just so amazing to be around. God has blessed me to be around so many amazing people that, you know, continue to feed into my spirit. Mm. So, um, like this past Valentine's Day, um, I spent one of the best Valentine's Day ever, and I spent it with my little, my grandbaby, um, which was so awesome. His parents wanted to go away, so I took him in, and we went out, and we had dinner. We're sitting with these couples, and he's entertaining the couples around, you know. <laughs> so, um, it's little things like that that just continue to feed into my spirit to help me to grow, you know, the love of Christ, the, the teachings that I'm getting. I, you know, I'm just having a ball. You know, whether mm -hmm. I'm single or whether I'm dating, I, I, I learned that God comes first and, you know, then everything else. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So single, saved and soaring, where where does um, I want each of you to talk about how are you soaring in your singleness? I'll start with you, Shirley. Fly equals fly. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to go there with sports, see? I was trying not to. Um, well, I, well, I was, am I soaring? Well, I, I can, I want to be honest with you. Like right now with, with everything that's going on and with COVID, um, my faith is going so high in the Lord right now. Just more prayer, more prayer like ever before. And so, I'm not even thinking about like all the other different things that's going on because I keep thinking about other folks that lost people. So mm -hmm. I'm not even thinking about myself. My mind is praying for other, other folks Amen. and being mindful that too, I need rest and all that stuff too. But um, soaring in my singleness right now, there was a time since Sherry, if you would have had us on and me on to talk about this, maybe around October, September, October, I would have been telling you, I'm ready to date. I'm looking for, I wait for my Boaz. I, you know, I would have been telling you all that, mm. but so, so much death has happened since then. And my mind is like, was rearranged to like, you know what, keep your mind focused on me, Shirley. At the mm. end of the day, you know, things are happening for a reason. And I, I never lost, I never lose a case because I am chief physician and the Lord just like keep me, you know, in the palm of his hands. And although I am single, 
although I love the Lord and although one day I do desire to be married. But right now, where I'm at right now in my singleness, it's not even about me. So I know our ministry is called Single, Safe, and Soaring. And we are, because we have some awesome, awesome, um, not only core team um, singles, but also the singles within um, Beloved, but also the body of Christ. Amen. You know, the body of Christ of singles and um, um, I'm married. Um, but at the end of the day, my prayer is for all the singles, the unmarried, the ones that desire to, to be the best they can be, that God mm-hmm. will answer their prayer. So I'm going to mm-hmm. always go back to other people because um, I know God mm-hmm. attend, he'll take care of me as long as I'm attending, you know, praying, you know, and being there for his people. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And even as we do soar, there are occasions that we stumble. So, um, Hope, tell me, when was the time when you struggled with being a, a, a Christian single? Um, so I'm going to be very transparent. Um, back in high school, a lot of my friends who I was connected to and had close relationships with, they all were out there and when I say out there they all you know told me their stories about you know what they do um with their significant other what they do with the boys or what have you and they always tried to kind of get me to do what they were doing but I knew who I was in Christ and I was like I cannot afford to ruin my relationship with Christ because I want to do what other people are influencing me to do so that's very important important to be surrounded with positive people who have the same mindset as you and who are going in the same direction as you are because if you don't then you're going to drift away you're going to drift off and that connection that you have with God with God it can you know disappear it, it won't know it will not for me with soaring and you know being a single yes at times it's hard and it's difficult but it's not difficult and hard when your focus is to get your education make sure that you succeed you're successful you make those that surround you support you encourage you you make them proud um for me i am definitely still going forward with losing both of my grandparents that was six months apart from each other that was very, very hard for me. I felt myself getting into a depressing mood. I wanted to do things that I knew I should not have been doing. I'm being very transparent. I wanted to, but that was my mindset. And I said, you know what? No, 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 no. This is not, God said, hope this is not who you are. This is not who I created you to be. This is, I know this is not the person that your parents have created you to be. This is not the young lady that your grandparents have instilled a hundred percent. I need to give him my all. I need to put him first in my life because if I don't put him first in my life, then I'm going to drift away. I'm going to want to do the things that the world does. Um, not comparing myself, not to be boastful or anything like that, but it really pays to have that per- that personal relationship with Christ because if you dig into the word, you're reading the scriptures, you're praying to him. You can pray to God to help control your flesh. You can turn mm-hmm. away watching the movies and watching the shows that will cause you to want to get mm-hmm. in that mood. You can turn away the kind of songs that people will influence you to listen to so that you can get in the habit of, yeah, it's okay to think these thoughts and to kind of, you know, think that it's okay to do the things that um, are not pleasing to God. And so I had to get in that mindset. I had to turned the ones away from high school. I lost a lot of friends in high school because I didn't want to go in the direction that they were going. So now that I'm in college, it was worse than college when I was on campus. It was worse because, you know, college students, they tend to do what they want to do. And so even some of them were trying to distract me and trying to make me go. And I said, "Uh uh-uh, I know who I am. I know what God has set for my life. If I'm going to be fully committed and fully connected to Christ, I have to do the things that are pleasing to him. Because even though I may not see, he watches and sees everything. He knows what's going on. God is not to be fooled or played around with. And so I had to come to that realization. I said, if I do this, I'm going to have to repent for it. If I, you know, turn away and I, God knows. He knows exactly what I'm doing. And so he's watching every 
footstep. And so that's that's the point that I wanted to make. But it's definitely wow. um, it's just an encouragement for those around my generation, those around my age. Just stay committed to God. If you're committed to God and have that personal um, relationship and connection with him, then you won't drift away. I'm telling you, it really pays to have that personal connection and relationship with him. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Some of the things that I heard that I'm going to reiterate what you said is that your personal relationship and all of you talked about your personal relationship with God. Um, that is the most important thing. All of you have talked about community. All of you are involved in different aspects of your life, but you're involved with other people that are community. Hope you had said that they, they uh, keep you accountable. So personal relationship, having a community um, so you won't get this loneliness, so you won't feel um, uh, that you just uh, have to be involved with everything or you just won't get a sense of um, depression that gets on you at times. Um, prayer, having a prayer life right. is Amen. essential. Amen. Amen. Uh, Hope you said you could pray to God to help you with your flesh. That mm -hmm. That is between you and God. God already knows you mentioned that, knows what's going on with you. You could just pray to God to strengthen you and to help you. You also said, and the rest of you also said this, I know who I am. That is essential, knowing who you are in the body of Christ. I didn't hear anybody say, I'm perfect. No. Um, no. I know who I am. You acknowledge your struggles, but you believe in God. Uh, fully committed. Um, and again, having that personal relationship, not to drift away, right. not to drift away. And the, the scriptures that we, that I had read earlier, this is where Paul was talking about it to the Corinthian church of all the different questions that we have. So when we get back to church or even on the, um, on, on zoom or however, uh, we are uh, connecting in church. There is a vacuum and there is a vacuum to have such a ministry for singles. Um, how is the church reaching out to its singles right now? Singles get lonely. Um, there's not as many distractions that we used to have. Singles were active in church. We don't have all those choirs or all those different ministries anymore. Is anybody reaching out to the singles as well as the, the elders um, in our church? But right now we're speaking of, of um, singles. So that, that's just a little shout out for anybody that's um, hearing us. Talk with your pastor. Talk with your first lady of the importance of establishing a single ministry. It could be small. It could just be once every other month just getting on zoom and just connecting with them how are they dealing with this loneliness how are they being still and knowing that i am god how are they um uh dealing with all the distractions of um social media that comes up so that's just the cue to um reach out to them. So I'm going to give you all a last word. I'm going to start with um, Margaret. Margaret, what, what is the last word that you would like to say to our listeners? Well, one thing I would like to say is that, you know, when you were talking about soaring, I said, I'm an eagle and not a chicken. And God is, God is helping me to, to um, not be as pre depressed as I used to be. And, and with me going, uh, praying more and, 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 you know, reading his word, I'm more, you know, I feel better about that. And so I'm just saying that, you know, God is my help mm -hmm. in, 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 you know, in my situation. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that we, um, as singles, have to be more intentional uh, we have Bible study at eight o'clock. I have to be more intentional about um, 
prayer time, seven to eight. Mm -hmm. So um, I am more intentional to stop what I'm doing and to give that time to the Lord, um, to be still and know that, I, that he is God. So there are things um, uh, that we have to become more intentional about for our peace. Um, yeah, Dwight, any last word? Um, I, I just want to, you know, encourage the singles, you know, uh, again, singleness is a gift. You know, it's not a curse. It's not that you're loved, That's right. you know, so re remember there's always something, that, you know, or someone that needs you. I, I like to encourage, you know, some of my young men or, or the brothers at the church, while you are single, you know, busy yourself in ministry. Um, uh, you know, I don't do it just to keep me out of trouble. I do it because I love it. I've grown to love serving God, you know, so I encourage not just the men, but the women, you know, to stay busy in Christ. And if God has that plan for you to be married, it will happen. Don't become discouraged. Don't become let down. Even during this COVID period when, and also be mindful with all the social media and the dating online, you, you have to be very careful. You know, I, I see, I hear the stories about uh, people uh, meeting up with people, meeting them on social media and what have you, and then it turns to something tragic. Um, so just be mindful um, and just uh, always, always pray. You know, yeah. prayer is just so, so important in every aspect in your life. Pray for your children if you have them. Pray for your family. Keep your pastors in prayer, you know, um, and, and I, our singles ministry definitely keep us in prayer because we are um, relatively new. And I, I thank God for Shirley because this was a vision that God gave her. And she pulled me in unwillingly. I didn't want to do it. I really <laughs> did. But I, you know, after talking to a few men at the church, and it was like, yo, what do, you know, what, what about the guys? I said, you know what, God, this is another plan you have for me. Mm -hmm. So just stay encouraged, you know, keep, you know, keep your faith. And regardless of COVID or anything else that comes your way, you know, never give up. Mm -hmm. And that that is very good, Dwight. I mean, yeah, what about the the men? What about the young men? Um, being equally yoked. You um, even have to uh, uh, avoid that even in the, in the church. Just because someone approaches you in the church does not necessarily mean that you are equally yoked and Amen. avoid all those distractions. Sure. So, mm -hmm. yes, I'm glad that you said yes because men have to have a forum also, just like women have to have mm -hmm. a forum to talk about their singleness and um, just being just being transparent. It's mm -hmm. not always easy. And that's why I was saying to be intentional about that set time to pray that just like uh, God willing, we get up every day to be intentional about your prayer life. Any last words, Margaret? God is with us and he cares about us and he understands what we go through and if we just continue to look to him uh, things will work out for us and I'm just holding on and waiting on God to do what he needs to do mm -hmm. and, and I, I surround myself with eagles and not chickens yes 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 who is that that's, uh, that's reminding you of that? That's, <laughs> that's my niece. That's it. it um, generational. That there is her go. niece there to help uh -huh. her, um, even on social media. So this is how we stay um, connected. We are a community. We are a community of believers. We have to right. rely on each other. We have to love each other. We have to strengthen each other. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, Vanessa, any last words? I would just say, just take your time. It's no hurry, you know, get to know yourself. Take some time with younger children. That's, that's a, they hold a special place in my heart. Older people, you know, while you're in this waiting period. Mm. Be good to yourself, you know? Call your friends. You know, I have a circle of friends that I call, I talk to, you know, we do things together, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but just just wait. There's no hurry. <laughs> it's no hurry, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Be encouraged. It'll it'll come when it's time. When, when it's time. time. When yep. it's time. When it's that's time. the reason. That's Sherry. Yes. That's the reason why I'm waiting because I'm 65 and I'm waiting. Okay. <laughs> Amen, mother. Amen. <laughs> Hurry up. That's all Hurry right. Up. That's all right. <laughs> I'm waiting too long. Yeah, and, and be be optimistic. Oh. Be optimistic. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying. All right, now I done got all that order. Who who else do I have? Hope. Yes, ma'am. So I just want to encourage. Yes, absolutely. I just want to encourage all of my single folk who are out there. Don't doubt what God can do for you. Um, God's timing. God's timing is the best timing. Enjoy your singleness during this time. Go love with somebody that is going through or go love on your family members. Check up on your family members. That's where mm-hmm. the real love comes in. Um, continue to love God. Continue to serve God because when you serve him, he will add blessings to your life. And then that's when he's going to provide you with the person that he has set for you. So I want to leave you with Jeremiah 29, 11. That is my life first. For right. I know the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord, mm-hmm. to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope in the future. We all have a future. We all have a hope. So just trust God's plan and let him right. in your life. Very good. Amen. I like that. Trust God's plan. Mm-hmm. I like that. I that like was good. That. Mm-hmm. So did I miss anybody with your last words? I just have one last word, Reverend. Go ahead, Dwight. I know it's a couple of days early, but I just want to say happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Oh. Happy birthday, happy Sherry. Birthday. Oh, well, Sherry. Well, thank you. I, uh, in my singleness, that is a gift from God. I'm going to treat myself because I'm worthy of it. Thank Amen. you. Lord. Amen. Thank That's you right. for that. And this has. One word. This has really been an experience, huh? I'm sorry, okay. I, the white just jumped in in front of me and let I wanted to share. <laughs> it's all right. I just want to share one word, two scriptures. Please read everyone Psalms 37 and 4. Yes, the light yourself right. also, mm-hmm. the light yourself Amen. also, the Lord, and He will yes. give you the desires of your heart. But also be mindful for Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So you need to do that first. Because pastor always say, you can be kept if you desire to be kept. kept. That's That's right. Right. How bad is your want to? I desire. I desire to be kept. So that's a prayer of mine. Father God, in the name of Jesus, please continue to keep me. Even if I meet somebody, I say, if this person is meant is not meant for me, if this person is meant to cause me any harm, mm-hmm. hurt, or danger that I cannot see, remove out of my life in the name Amen. of Jesus. And that's a prayer I had to ask Amen. and had to mention. Amen. I didn't want to say that. But as I got older, you know what I mean? As I would say that, and I'm like, dad, that guy didn't call me. Like, what? <laughs> but I said, wow, Lord, you're, you're protecting so me. Yeah. I said, so mm-hmm. thank you. So mm-hmm. I say that prayer. I say yeah. that prayer. I don't want to say it, but it's a protection over my life that I give to God. And I, I have to trust in him. And I want to walk as he walked before God. And I just want to say thank you, Sister Sherry. I love all of oh, y'all. And thank God you so much. Thank you well, so much, um, Sister Sherry. But you mentioned Psalm 37.4. Yeah. And you mentioned Matthew 6, 33. Those are both scriptures from uh, the single ministry. And why did you um, pick those two um, scriptures? What touched your heart? Well, as you was, as you was um, talking about share last words, and we are mindful, like within our ministry, what, you know, what, what scriptures that we stand on. Mm-hmm. Um, in our singles, in our singles ministry at Beloved St. John Evangelist's Church. Um, we, although we stand on those um, scriptures, we are being built by Nehemiah, uh, uh, Nehemiah yeah. um, chapters two through six, because we are rebuilding our singles ministry. Beloved St. John always had a singles ministry. It started uh, when I started in, in 90, I forgot, 97. Blah, blah, blah. 97. <laughs> listen, I, listen, listen. God said, I'm a beautiful, and I'm beautiful, and one of the teammates. So it doesn't yes. matter about the age. 
But right. a lot of people didn't know that we had a singles ministry prior mm-hmm. to what we have now because there's so many new people. Um, mm-hmm. We had a couple of singles ministries. So this is the third one that I know of. Um, and God has blessed me to, you know, to um, trust me enough to be a leader over it. So while we are in a rebuilding phase, it's so important. So many people are so crucial to the singles ministry being built. So when y'all take, when y'all go back home or when y'all home, please read Nehemiah chapters two through six. And it talks about the different people that had something to do with rebuilding a wall back in Nehemiah's time. But we're talking about rebuilding the singles ministry. Yes. Everybody is so crucial. The, the, marriage, the marriage ministry is crucial. Um, the senior, senior states is crucial. Mm-hmm. Asking the first lady is crucial. Um, the men's <laughs> ministry is crucial. Everybody, everybody at Beloved St. John is, is so crucial to the singles ministry that we are taking pieces from different people to come and be speakers, you know, within right. our ministry at different times of the month. So we have something very interesting coming up next month. So I hope y'all look at Beloved St. John Evangelist Church website because the singles ministry has something fantastic coming out that y'all gonna wanna be a part of, that y'all gonna need is taxes time. And who don't wanna learn more about taxes? Because yes. of what we're doing in 2020. So that's coming ah, part one of part two. So be, be, it's coming at you real soon. Coming at yes. you. And if anyone out there on Facebook that's listening to us, if you have a single ministry, please put it down. We want um, to know about other single ministries. It is so vital um, to have a single ministry as part of the whole body of the of the church all the different ministries as Mm -hmm. um shirley was saying they are taking from different ministries Mm -hmm. and strengthening their ministry they're building up and this is not done in isolation this is done together the whole church so you could get an elder from the ministry you could get the deacons and the deaconess the music ministry Mm -hmm. um the pastoral ministry the maintenance ministry, everybody counts in building up that wall because when we build up the wall, when we build up the body, ah! oh, let mm. me start. See, Shirley, look what you started. Jesus. God have mercy. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. We must remember that we are beautifully and wonderfully, wonderfully made by made. God. We are the apple, apple of his apple. eye. We yes, are right. not in I- isolation. Our singleness is a gift from God. Yes, Amen. it is. Amen. 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 So I just want to um, shift. Woo! I just want to mm. shift for a minute for our sponsors that we have uh, for Reset. Our sponsors that help Reset Legal Shield with Kimberly Robinson, Unlimited consultation, letters and phone calls, legal shield, document review, estate planning, traffic uh, tickets, medical directive, protect your rights, available ter- uh, attorneys 24-7, preferred member discount, legal coverage uh, for all of your benefits, ID shield to protect your family and identity theft, credit bureau, So this is this young lady. She says, we can all agree that everyone deserves equal justice in this country. She made it her personal mission to share these services and this opportunity with as many people as she can. Legal Shield, she does not want to read another hashtag or hear about families that are struggling financially. People are tired of living from paycheck to paycheck. She wants... Uh, to have financial freedom, and she's extending this to everybody. Kimberly Robinson. Dot, we are legal shield. Dot com or Kimberly Robinson one two three eight four at gmail. Dot com. Another of our sponsor is Paparazzi Accessory. This is by Erica Dennison Mack, who um, lives down in Texas, and all is well. Praise God for for that. Paparazzi accessories are always fabulous, always fashionable, and always $5. With new styles added daily, you can shop anytime and look like a million dollars. Everything is nickel and lead free. (laughs) Not only does she sell jewelry to bring extra income into her home, but to help women feel good 
about themselves simply by wearing a $5 piece of jewelry. I know it's possible because that is her story. She says she also used the time not only to sell jewelry, but to encourage women in the Lord. Have mercy. All Come right. To Erica at <laughs> www.livelaughshineaccessories.com. I like that. Live, laugh, shine, 116 at gmail.com. And we have Elizabeth Guthridge is the founder and financial wellness and consultant of EAG Credit Solutions, LLC. EAG Credit Solutions help both men and women manifest their legacies by exposing them to financial literacy using credit restoration as a starting point. She maximized your credit score by removing any inaccurate, erroneous, and obsolete information in your credit file, including collections, judgments, repossessions, medical bills, late payments. She works with individual couples, families, realtors, bankers, and car dealership, and more. Our services include budgeting, building, repairing credit, a will, trust, power of attorney, identity, and credit monitoring. She will give you a free 15-minute consultation. Reach Elizabeth at 717-715-3979 or Liz at eagcreditsolutions.com for a 15-minute uh, credit uh, consultation. So I just want to thank our guests. Um, I pray that we have been a blessing to all of you. This is the whole purpose of Reset is to uplift, inspire, and encourage using um, the, 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 the Bible as our foundation always, not um, coming to people just with a conversation, our live lives. And how do we do this? We share our struggles and we share our celebration. So today was on singleness. And if you learned anything, Singleness is from God. And Amen. I thank you all yes. until our paths uh, meet again. God bless you. Be safe out there, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Good job, everybody. Good job. Yes. Thank Good you. Job. Bye. Thank Bye. you. God bless. Bye. 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 Bye.